All hypnosis is really self-hypnosis. A hypnotist doesn't have any power. They just know how to direct somebody like a coach directing an athlete. Nobody likes pain, so yeah. we put up a, a block so we don't receive the pain. So bringing back a memory of something could cause the pain, so we yeah. mentally put up a block. We are all hypnotists. Yeah. We all have an effect on people. So we have the power to influence everybody in our circle of suggestion, including ourselves. Consciously, we make decisions based on an internal programming, based on our experience in life. We own every thought that we have. It does not own us. Powerful. You can control how you perceive and react to things unless you don't believe you can. What is it if you could pinpoint one thing that makes that person so successful once they've achieved their goal? Now, everybody's different, so they're all gonna, but I think that there's a common thread to everybody we hold to think that are successful and that's mindset. Yeah. Mindset, their ability to not allow the negativity or destructive auto thoughts, if you will, rule their world. Well, welcome back to another episode of Feeling the Healing with Foltzy. I'm Matt Foltz, and uh, I'm elated to have my next guest here today. And I'm going to have to pull up my notes on this one because Ricky Kalman has a little bit of a paragraph of kudos here. That's short, by the way. Sorry, keep, <laughs> yeah, going, keep going. I know. I'm Usually like, it's this long, but uh, I'm going to let you go with the short version. Yeah. <laughs> Growth mindset expert, motivational speaker, and celebrity hypnotist has made numerous special guest appearances on ESPN, HLN, Disney, Hallmark Channel, Fox, TV Guide, and Comedy Central. I'm sure there's ones I've missed in there. I mean, um, also worked with numerous athletes as well as the Cincinnati Bengals, the New York Yankees. He's the author of a book, Leverage Your Mindset, right here. And we're going to get into this in a little bit. He's developed an app which essentially promotes mindset change for people. He's changing lives literally around the globe with teaching people how to change their mindset. So super glad to have you here. Um, so welcome. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm, I've gotten more interested in as I've gotten older is how people found their passion in life and how they found purpose. <laughs> and you, I mean, this is something, it's not like, okay, I'm, I found my passion at a, um, as a bartender, or I found my, I mean, this is kind of a different, I mean, as a hypnotist and all that. So if you would, please enlighten us on where, as maybe as a child or kind of where this ramped up. I'm still a child. Uh, Matt, thank you. Thanks for having me on. I'm super excited to talk to you here today. Um, you know, it's funny. I used to say, uh, how does somebody get started in this business? Misspent youth. I don't know. Uh, but it all started because I created a very unique comedy show in my teens, and yes, I'm also a hypnotist. So I took hypnosis to the opposite realm, took away the swinging watch, I'm gonna put you in a trance, because it really isn't that. I think that that's the biggest misconception. When you think of hypnosis, the first thing most people will do is not even look me in the face, like afraid, to, like I'm gonna put them in a trance. Uh, and I took it to a place of explaining what hypnosis is. And I want to get to that in a minute. Yeah, and we yeah, were, we're, I, want to, yeah I want to get to that elephant in the room in yeah. a second. Yeah. So <clears> when <throat> I created this comedy show in my teens, it, it became a passion. It became, it became my golf. It became my hobby. They grew into a business. I knew it was going to be a business. And at the same time as I'm doing the comedy, it was educating people on mindset. Yeah. And so my career grew as I was explaining pe to people how to use simple, and I mean simple techniques to improve their life, to put to action their intentions. So to answer your question, how does somebody get started? Um, I've never had a job. I've never worked for anybody. I've always worked myself. So I guess I'm a serial entrepreneur yeah. where I'm always trying to find something new about me and, and really expand on, on investing in myself. That's amazing. Now, you also dabbled in some magic, right? Oh, I mean, boy. stuff like, look oh, at this. Boy. Look, look, yeah. look at that. Yeah. See? Yeah. I can do a little magic, too. So I mean, people see that. So yeah. that's where it actually started. I was a childhood magician. Yeah. My first realm in business was uh, my first show at 10 years old. Um, I got paid by my neighbor. Didn't have to give a refund, so the show was good. Yeah. Uh, I did a 30-minute magic show, and that's where I'm like, okay, this is cool, and I love this. I'm 10 years old, and I'm like, okay. So I kept building my repertoire of magic and, and illusions, and I was doing everything. But then I met a hypnotist, and I was... 
absolutely blown away by what I was watching. And I love magic. Some of my friends are still in the business and some of the biggest players in the business today, biggest yeah. movers and shakers. And um, I, that's how it all started. Yeah. That's cool. I, I mean, it's funny. Yeah, I used to watch. <coughs> remember, remember Johnny? I'm dating myself. Johnny Carson was a magician back in the day, and you, you know, you look back at some of these people that were successful and later in life they did magic. Remember Alan Thick? Yeah. From Thick of the Night. Yeah. Remember, you know, Growing Pains. Yeah. Uh, I did a gig with him many, many years ago when he came up. You know, I was a, I was a magician. You know, I'm like, oh, that's so cool. So um, yeah, it's it's kind of wild how magic kind of spurs people's talents. So. Let's go back now to the hypnosis thing, because obviously there's a lot of different, like you said, misconceptions about it. And you explained to me one time about kind of the nuts and bolts of what it is. And I, I like for people to hear kind of your theology maybe on right. it. And so, yeah, tell me, tell, tell me about that. Well, going back to when I, when people still think of hypnosis, I think the average person thinks of someone being controlled or made to do something. Actually, the control is at the opposite space. The control is by the individual. Yes. The hypnotist is really just the catalyst to helping the control happen by the individual. So if you're an athlete and you're being coached by your coach, who's really doing the performance? The athlete is, right? So all hypnosis is really self-hypnosis. A hypnotist doesn't have any power. They just know how to direct somebody like a coach directing an athlete. So if you're making the same mistake or you need to be redirected, you might not know where that, that spot is, but the coach might. They can see things because they're look, looking at it from a different point of view than the individual. So in my eyes, it's really simple. Hypnosis is whether it's being guided by somebody, but you're really guiding yourself. Yeah. It's a state of awareness, a state of concentration, far from being asleep, far from being unconscious. Although I'm sure you're going to say, well, Ricky, what about when people are like slumped over and yeah. they're they're just relaxed. They're yeah. just so relaxed. I mean, when you're sleeping, you're not sleeping upright. You're, yeah. you're really relaxed because yeah. your muscles are completely in a state of bliss and calmness. Yeah. And I guess it falls in line. I was thinking about this the other day. This, you know, there's people that have trauma in their life or something they've had to remember and they can't consciously get to it until <laughs> someone puts them in a, a state of either what's relaxation or the, where the now they can start, oh yeah, I remember that I, they that person had a red shirt on. They can recall those events because right. I guess their state of mind is. They put positioned. up blocks, blocks, yeah. fears, phobias, fear of pain. So you know nobody nobody likes pain. So yeah. we put up a, a block so we don't receive the pain. So bringing back a memory of something could cause the pain. So we yeah. mentally put up a block. You dive into the whole area of that, but when you help people, just kind of remove the misconceptions, remove a preconceived outcome. Relaxation does that to us, man. I mean, yeah. you know this. This is what you do every day. Yeah. You've seen how, you know, how, how often does that patient come into your place? They're really stressed out. They're in a lot of pain. And don't get me wrong, the pain is probably very valid. But how many times have you said to a patient, I got you? Exactly. We're going to get you. We're going to take care of you. It's going to be a process. This is why you're successful because your demeanor, it's not just about technique, it's about delivering trust with your patients. All of a sudden you see it in their patient's face. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that from you. I, I already feel better, you know? Maybe I'm a, I'm a hypnotist and I didn't there know you, it. Okay, all right, now you're <laughs> tapping into but yeah. no, I'm not kidding. No. We are all hypnotists. Yeah. We all have an effect on people. So we have the power to influence everybody in our circle of suggestion, including ourselves. I tell you, this is such amazing stuff. And I want to get down to the nitty gritty of what the book talks about. We'll talk more about that in a little bit, but mindset. You know, we, the, like, like the mindset that you talk about, um, you know, the, just changing the way we think. Like, I know you call them the auto thoughts. The auto thoughts, which are positive and negative. Mm -hmm. Speak on those for just a moment. You ever talk yourself in and out of something before absolutely. you even start? Yes, Why absolutely. start if I, I don't have that time? You know what? I don't know if I can get that done, so why even start? We've already convinced ourselves. And unconsciously, we make decisions based on an internal programming based on our experience in life. So, you know, think about it. As you grow, grow up, you're a teenager, you're a college student, you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. It doesn't make a difference how old you are. We compile a bunch of experiences in life, and they unconsciously guide us. Now, those can be used 
against us or for us? And so an auto thought is an unconscious belief based on the internal programming. All right, so again, just to kind of dumb it down a little bit, I'll make it even more simple. If you ever been to a restaurant and you had a bad experience? Mm-hmm, yeah, so oh yeah. So you go to this restaurant, you had a bad experience, food, wait, waiter, waitress, whatever, experience from the host, whatever. I'm not going back, I'm not going back. And you forget about it. You, a couple years later, all of a sudden, someone says to you, hey man, we're gonna go to that restaurant. You're like, oh, not going there. Yeah. You haven't been there in years. What just happened? The memory bank that you didn't even think about just came forward like boom, lightning. Came up and told you, remember when you had a bad experience? You're not going there anymore. Yeah. It didn't slow down and say, you know what? Why do you guys want to go there? Oh, they have a new chef. Oh, they've changed the place. Mm -hmm. So auto thoughts can be constructive or they can be deconstructive. And I think that you can acknowledge them, put them in its place, put them off the side. Now that sounds a little bit complicated, but I think when it comes down to it, if you really just think of it this way, we own every thought that we have. It does not own us. Powerful. You can control how you perceive and react to things unless you don't believe you can. And you know, on that same line, you think about adversity. <clears throat> you know, you see people that, that go through crazy adversity. Yeah. Like they've been beat down in life or they started off in the slums. Mo you know, mom and dad left them or whatever and they essentially rise from the ashes. And you're, you're talking about, I mean, there's a big talk about, oh, nature versus nurture. Some people are just built with this, I can, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I can come back. And there's others, they have to be nurtured in such a way. And there's people who say, well, I was never given that opportunity. My parents were so mean to me. Or, and it's, but regardless, it's, it's, it is, you own your thoughts. And it, it amazes me how some people can come out of crazy adversity where others can't. Well, you know, the people we admire, we admire people for their, their ability to overcome the challenges, get over hurdles, put things aside. What is it if you could pinpoint one thing that makes that person so successful once they've achieved their goal. Now, everybody's different, so they're all gonna, but I think that there's a common thread to everybody we hold to think that are successful, and that's mindset. Yeah. Mindset, their ability to not allow the negativity or destructive auto thoughts, if you will, rule their world. You know, it's interesting. Um, <clears throat> I've been doing some research on some stuff, and, and, we, and you and I spoke before that in my world, there's some weird carryover of how mindset actually can change. There's a physical component of it, how I can physically change the, the, the dynamic and the physiology of the body. 1998, Ohio State University of Columbus did a research and just kind of just cut to the chase. They found that with anxiety and like negativity or stress, that people heal 40% slower, which so it's like, okay, wait a minute. That's not, I mean, that's right. actual healing. Right. That's healing. That's feeling the healing. <laughs> that's healing based on what's going on up here. Because you're, you're yeah. my quick answer that your body is working overtime to deal with the stress. Yeah. You know, you think about it. You got the, all the soldiers inside yourself trying to heal your body. But no, it's trying to combat the stress that's holding you back. It's, it's you know, the stress is, is so overwhelming and it's trying to calm you down. It's, it, it, but it can't because... You've just, you know, the negativity is just so overwhelming because we know that if, if you're upset, if we're upset about something, if somebody says something, it can just kind of fester in your head and it kind of works it around and it kind of finds its space and it manifests and it starts to grow. And it, if we don't deal with it, it becomes, you know, so dominant in our, in our thought process. Yeah. It kind of controls the whole day. How was your day? You know, I still got that thing on my mind. Yeah. You know, we, we've, we've said these things over and over again, but I think it's important to step back and realize this is not a soft skill. Understanding mindset is not something you just go, well, you're just saying, Ricky, be positive and life is awesome. Um, maybe I'm saying that a little bit here, but I want you to look at the deeper meaning to that. Don't you think life will be better if you're more positive? And it may, wouldn't it be easier to live life if you're a more positive, understanding person? of where your thoughts take you. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, an, e it's an easy 
equation. You're, you're right. right it's right. easy, but if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. And that's why we're having this conversation. <laughs> that's right. Because in life, things get in our way and we are human. And sometimes we think that we're in control and we're not of our reality in itself. Yeah. Um, even some of the most highly, and you know them, uh, highly acclaimed athletes, I guarantee you understand the importance of constantly training their brain just like they're training their muscles. Well, I got it, the, the whole adversity thing and the negativity thing and the positivity thought process reminds me of a patient of mine, Brenda, and um, pretty beat down. Uh, went through a tremendous amount of adversity to the point where it was physically paralyzed for months and very easily could have just said, you know what, this is it. But through, I think that whether she knew she was doing it or not, that positive thinking or that positive mindset, uh, she too rose from the ashes and made a, made a huge recovery, which was pretty small percentage that would be, could, could pull that off. So that's pretty cool. So everything we're talking about is, is so you've told me about Brenda, um, dive a little bit. Cause what were, what were people say? This is what kind of hit me when you told me about Brenda at first, what were others saying about her future? Well, I think that, you know, when you talk about healthcare and, you know, especially doctors and, um, generally, you know, there's this, they're going to put you in a category, you yeah. know, based on your age, what you've been through. Can we say your age? Well, should I do that? We'll see. We'll, we'll, right. we'll, we'll but, talk. But, but, but let's just say seasoned. Okay. Well, but let me ask you, because yeah. you had told me something about, about her ability to walk, be ability to, to heal. The, 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 the prognosis was not good. It wasn't good. Let's, no. just, let's just put it out let's there. Let's say you're on a ventilator intubated through a, you know, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're being breathed, breathed for, right. for, for ability to weeks, walk, can't walk, can't get out of bed, can't move, can't even blink, can't even, not even conscious, can't even. Right. So yeah, she develops, uh, well, first of all, she went through since 2017, she was diagnosed with a cancer, which uh, like a T cell, non Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, and then she was still deals with that. But then I think it was 2021 was uh, Delta blow, found a tumor. 26 chemo and radiation sessions just had to go through all that which is brutal I believe the day that she found out the tumor was gone the day of she her legs get weak and the next day she's in the hospital can't move intubated through tracheotomy and essentially diagnosed with Guillain-Barre syndrome and for people who don't know what that is it's essentially your body attacks its neurological system and totally paralyzes you're you are unaware you can't even you're not even, a, you're out. And some, this, some people don't come back. And three months in rehab and finally made it home, oh, I don't know, four or five, four months later, February of 2022, came home to, you know, a home that was hospital bed in the den, can't, 24 hour health care. That's, that's a, that, that's a, that is a, that's a rough thing to come home to. So you talk about the mindset of somebody at that point of their life. It's emotional. I mean, it's it's literally a, a task that's probably weighing on them every single day. Yeah, and the fear come, come full circle. That's not her. Yeah, she's steadfast in her ways, from what you told me. Yeah, and is determined to get out of that rut. And then, it but comes, it's mindset. It's, comes it's, to see you, you start working with her. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to throw some credit to you. I mean, you you became her coach, and what happened? She's uh she's independent living. She's she's uh, hospital bed's gone, all the devices are gone. She's walking. walking, walking, and she lives life. Walking, driving, living her best life ever, every single day. Yeah, like it's no tomorrow. That's right. That's that. I, why is it that you know you talk to a, a twenty year old, a thirty year old that feels like their world is ending? You know, right? Um, they can't ever be as good as the person next door. They sh they they throw shade of at everything it's like well i could never be as good as that you know person and they have a little bit of envious and a little bit of jealousy and which is are powerful words that i think are almost you know curse words to me when somebody says they're jealous because it's such a negative kind yeah. of you know uh, aspect of things but going back to why you brought up a story is that listen i'm sure there was 
medical advice. I'm sure there was medical counseling. I'm sure there was, it, it's not just, hey, think great in your life and she got up yeah. and walk. It was perseverance up here. Sure. Even on her worst days, I'm sure she looked at that as a gift. Yeah, I think she also, she, uh, her, her, yeah, her mindset was she, she turned the negatives into positive yeah. thoughts. And that's, that's, yeah. And, um, um, just a rock star. I, yeah. I still call her a rock star. Okay. She's like, I mean, literally, it's, it's, if I have a calendar, a champion physical therapy calendar, she's going to be Miss February. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. She's going to awesome. be uh, the Valentine's special. Okay. All right. I, so, I appreciate sharing the story yeah. and there's purpose to our conversation. Yeah. But, um, you I know, wanna, I, I, I know that the, the, when we first met, that was like the first conversation you had, you talked about Brandon. Well, I think it's, it's, yeah. it speaks volumes to what you do and the, the, you know, if the, the the book the speaking everything you're doing is is try i mean that's just I mean, it's just it's one thing to improve someone's just okay i feel more calm or i feel better but when you can say someone can just turn their life around mm -hmm. it's, it's massive and that's what you're preaching and teaching yeah. i love that that's that's why i was so thrilled to have you on this because i think what you're doing is oh, we could talk for hours i know we could. I, I don't i don't uh, get bored we, talking no, about but, it i mean it's just it's my it's my fuel so before we get to the book, I just want to switch gears for just a second. Let's talk about if you had to tell, and it's not just maybe teenage athletes or, but even um, like, what is it, like, what would you say is a something for performance? Like if you had a little, you know, for the performance of a, a, maybe a teenage athlete or a college athlete, you know, these are things that they're, they're dealing with stress from their coaches, mm -hmm. parents, come on now, you got to get out there and you're going to be in the major league. We got to get you out there. We got the, the stress that some of these kids are going through. I mean, if there's if there's anything, maybe I don't know, a nugget of of something you could say that the way to trigger their their way to I don't know. No, I think it's a great question. I think um, if you've got somebody that has passion for something and they're a little blocked or they're a little confused, they're not really sure which direction they're going to go in. I think we all have great intentions in life. I think that we we know what we want deep down. If I asked you, do you want what do you want to do? And you'd say, well, I want to be successful. Okay. My next question is, well, how do you become successful? Because what my interpretation of success is going to be different from you. Um, but I think a simple, a simple thing, and we do this in the book, and I'm just going to tease a little bit here, so I'll give it away. One of the things that I, whether I'm working with a thousand sales individuals or an executive leader one-on-one -on -one like this, the first question I will ask somebody, so listen closely if you're if you're watching still um, give yourself permission give yourself permission to either win or fail yeah. so if you say to yourself i i just don't know if this is for me well then okay then that's your decision so give yourself permission to move on instead of dwelling on it if you want to be more successful at anything you want to do in life give yourself permission okay what well, well, are you just saying ricky um just Say that to yourself. No, no, no. I'm asking you to actually write it out. And in the book, I actually walk through the process of literally writing out this permission and going through the process of making a contract with yourself. Now, if you're saying to yourself that that sounds a little simple, but sometimes the simplest things in life become the most powerful things in life. And just by giving yourself permission unconsciously engraves the decision in your head to hold yourself accountable because you are responsible for the next action. Whether you succeed or you fail, that accountability holds on you and only you. Wow. I love it. Well, I want to talk about the book for a little bit here. So leverage your mindset. And this is developed for a, ideally for a program, 14 day. Yes. Read action every day. I mean, it's um, for everybody. Yeah. Anybody that wants to just challenge themselves. Yeah. If you say, okay, here's the first question. I say it in the book. The first line is. I can do better. And if you can say to yourself, yeah, I would, I would like to be a better, that's not criticism, that's a challenge. I could be better at one thing today, sleep, stress, uh, health, wellness, gratitude, attitude, sales, profitability, growing my business, better leader. Yeah, if any of those things just resonate with you, play better golf, whatever. If, at re if anything I just said resonate, hey, this book is for you because it's a simple plan, it's 14 days, you're going to repeat something on a regular basis and you're going to engrave that new software that you've already had. I'm going to yeah. show, by the way, there's nothing in here that you don't already know. I'm not selling you something that you don't already know. Yeah, but you, but you know, I laid it out. Lay it out. I laid you it lay out. Lay it out and you're, 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 you're teaching it and you're, you're, you're helping people figure it out. Yeah. I mean, like you said, you may know it, but you don't know how to figure it out. Well, and the app, the app you have, let's talk about the app. That's the really cool thing too. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, 
You got an app. So <laughs> Come on. the book was designed with the aspect of, okay, there's this plan here, but I want to walk, I want to walk, I want to talk to these people that are reading the book. So I said, well, what, do, what if I create an audio program that somebody would download? By the time we had that idea done, downloads were like gone. So then I'm like, okay, let's create an app that becomes your support product, becomes your, 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 like your mindset coach in the palm of your hand. So as you read the book, you use my app, which is Ricky Kalman. That's the name of the app. You can search your app store, just type in Ricky Kalman. Yeah. But even in the book, there's a QR code. You can download it. So every day as you read a chapter, chapter a day, you go back and use a program in the app to reinforce what you just experienced. Yeah. And then if you want to dive in deeper, after you've used the, gone through the book, I've put a series of coaching sessions from sports to health, wellness, yeah. mindset coaching, all in the app too. I know, the app's really cool. Thank the app you. is really cool. I love it. You know, and I think in today's age, and I thought about this the other day when we were leading up today, more than ever with social media and the things that tell us what we should be thinking or how we should react, I mean, more than ever, this is critical stuff. Because yeah. really, every social media and everything else drives people to think a certain way or to, to react. And, you know, everybody puts something on there so they can get their likes, you know, and they, they, and they feel better when they get their likes. And it's almost, almost like a drug. And people more than ever need this coaching, what you're doing. So I think, that's what I said, having you here today was amazing for me um, because you're changing lives around the world, around the globe. And, and I think that's such a cool thing. When you're, when you're, I mean, like for me, I'm like, hey, I'm going to change one life at a time. I'm well, not going to change the world, but maybe I'll no, change a no, person at a time. That's my goal too. One, you never, yeah. it's, it's that one email you get from somebody that says, hey, you know, this made a difference. And I, I don't take, I don't dismiss that, uh, that one email every day. So one last thing that before we kind of start wrapping up here is if I had a, the Ricky Kalman strategies or keys to success, whether it's a one little nugget or two, like what would it, what would that look like? I know some people say, you know, don't be afraid to fail or whatever, but I don't know. Well, my, my go-to statement always to myself is change the way you think and you will change your world. Now let's go deeper into that strategy is, and I'm human too. I'm like, everybody. I'm going to have a good day. I'm going to have a bad day. I'm going to have an issue. I'm going to have an argument. I'm going to be blamed for something, <laughs> um, whatever it may be. I think the analogy that comes in my head, and again, if you're a leader, if you're in sales, I don't care if you, even if you're an athlete, here's, here's the one strategy that I always tell myself. I hold the remote control. I can hit the pause I can hit stop, I can play, I can go backwards, I can move forwards, it's my decision. So if I hold the remote control, then the next level of that is, what do I want? So what do you want? What's, what do you want today? What do you want? So I try to start my day with questions and I play out the question in my head, figure out what's gonna take to make that happen, see myself doing it, and what's it feel like once I've achieved it. I love that. I that's I love it. And hey, wait a second. We have a special uh, we have a special person coming here we didn't know about. Hang on a second. Well, we 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 teed it up. Let's we teed that. it up. We teed it up because uh, I'm 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 gonna, I'm going to throw something in here. Yeah. If you don't mind. No. I I really appreciate what you do because you are such a powerful person when it comes to knowledge of helping people overcome challenges in their life getting them back where they need to go. But you understand the power of thought as well. You're a creature of, of self-discovery as well. And so your stories that you've told me about other people have really resonated. Not just, hey, they did the plan, they worked it, they, they came in, they did the exercises. You've really been steadfast about the individuals that go, okay, they get it more, they're gonna be even more successful. And uh, you're a great person, and I, I've gotten to know you, and I, I really appreciate that. So I'm going to well, tee it up because I you said I got a special that. guest yeah. for you. We're going to talk about it. 